hear the word data, we often think about numbers, like the concentration of a pollutant in a certain location, the number of humpback whales migrating along the Pacific coast, or the number of people planning to vote for a certain candidate in an election. These numbers can be data, but many things besides numbers can also be data, like sound recordings of humpback whales communicating as they migrate, or verbal descriptions of voters' experiences at polling booths. Then what exactly are data? From a scientific standpoint, data come in many forms. Numbers, sounds, images, but just as not all data are numbers, not all numbers or observations or images are data. Data are collected for a reason and are guided by questions. The guiding questions may be very basic or they may be very complex, but these questions can help determine how data are collected and the how of data collection is important. Scientific data are collected in a systematic way that's replicable at a later time at a different location. But what do these two terms, systematic and replicable, mean? Let's discuss them in more detail. I recently had the opportunity to travel to Brazil to study the effect of deforestation on mercury emissions from soil. To understand how removing the forest affected the transport of this pollutant, we sampled several different locations over a two-week period. Since mercury emissions are affected by both temperature and light, we made sure we measured the temperature of the soil and the amount of sunlight every time we took a measurement. Also, at the end of each day, we carefully marked off our sample sites so that we could return to the same locations each day. A high quality data set is like this. It's collected systematically in a consistent and standardized manner under conditions that are well documented. I also said that data should be collected in a way that's replicable. In my work, we assured that we could replicate sampling from day to day by marking our sites. However, we also spent a lot of time detailing our collection methods, identifying the precise instrument we used, how it was calibrated, and other factors, so that the study could be replicated. We actually returned to the Amazon on two different occasions, once in September and once in November, to see how the site responded over time. And because we had precisely plotted the location of our study, we were able to find the location again without much difficulty. In some cases, it may be other researchers who want to replicate or extend the research, conducting a similar study at the same or a different location. Scientists detail their methods to make them transparent, allowing others to review their procedures and understand the limitations and inherent biases in their data set. In some cases, this helps establish the method as a standard procedure in a field. Data can be quantitative in nature, like our measurements in the Amazon, meaning they indicate the amount of something and can be graphed or analyzed using statistical techniques. Or they can be qualitative in nature. For example, if you ask people why they voted for a certain candidate, you would likely get many different answers. You can still group these responses together and count them, but the data themselves are the reasons articulated by the voters. Data storage is an important aspect of data collection. Just as it can be hard to find your phone in a messy room, a messy data set, one in which the conditions under which each observation was made is not recorded, hides useful data. In the Amazon, I kept a detailed notebook of when certain mercury concentrations were observed and what the light and temperature conditions were at that precise moment. If I had simply recorded these variables randomly without documenting when they occurred, the data would be useless. The methods we use to organize and archive data are critical. A major advance in science in recent decades is the technology to publish and share large data sets via the internet. This allows many scientists with different backgrounds and knowledge to examine the same data set and mine it for different findings. Or it even allows a large team of scientists and citizen scientists the opportunity to collaborate in collecting, analyzing, and interpreting data toward the common goal of understanding the world around us. When you start collecting your own data, decide what you will do to make it systematic and replicable. You should discuss this with your mentor or others in your research group to take advantage of their experience too. The more attention you pay to these little details, the better your data set will be. Mm -hmm.